most obvious angles to play with Z for Zachariah is um, either the race angle because of the cast, you have Chiwetel Ejiofor and then Margot Robbie and Chris Pine, um, or the gender dynamics as well in terms of having it be like this post-apocalyptic end of the world. Which one is she going to choose to like further the human race? Right. In the movie, it seems like religion and the conflict between faith and science is like an even bigger theme that you're tackling. Can you talk a little bit about uh, why you chose to go for that instead of the more kind of obvious angle? Mm. It's interesting to me that like at the end of the world, that would probably be a big subject <laughs> for people, and you don't kind of see that in, in stuff. If you're putting two people into a scenario that haven't ever you know, that are like from different universes. Being kind of a, a person that's maybe more agnostic or kind of is the scientist is meeting somebody who had like a really like, uh, had faith and was kind of like really like focused on, on that in their life, that that is a, a, would be a believable and like understandable like thing that could very easily happen, right. but would actually kind of maybe be a bigger barrier to communication than like a lot of other things that you're saying, like gender, race, or other scenarios like right. that, that that could actually be a thing that would be kind of harder to like navigate for the two of them. Is that something that's brought up much in the book? Um, that it's it it is actually, I mean, the, the name Z for Zechariah, like, so there is kind of an overtone of, of her being uh, a religious person, and he, he's clearly a scientist. Uh, Nisar Modi, the screenwriter, had also kind of done some work and kind of explored that. The church is a very big part of this this kind of conflict because the church that um, Anne's father built uh, is seemingly the only way that John can create. Um, he needs the wood to use to make electricity, and that's the only way for them to survive. So um, if you kind of play with that, and, and the screenwriter play with that kind of tension there, uh, which I find really interesting. Can you speak a little bit about that? What John Loomis wants to do is he wants to, you know, kind of be able to give her, like, electricity, which is a way to start again, and kind of, like, I, I was fascinated, I guess, about the, like, the kind of accidental missteps that maybe two people could would have in a scenario where, like, in his mind, that wouldn't be that big of a, a, of a problem, that electricity would clearly trump that in his belief, you know, and she's just like, not, nah, that yeah. is not sort of what is going on there. That that was like a way to kind of uh, externalize that conversation. And then I also know that in the book, it's, there's only those two characters, correct? It's just That's Anne right. and John. So what was the kind of um, impetus for adding um, Chris Pine's character to the narrative? You know, it, uh, the addition of the new character, it, the book, in a lot of ways, it focuses on kind of um, John's character is quite the antagonist. The Anne character is also younger and kind of slightly even you know more naive or, or in, a, in a certain different direction than what I found was kind of contemporary or interesting. And so when we were like thinking about her being a bit older and them having to have a communication, you know, that in my mind the the interesting thing to explore about about the end of the world that I hadn't c kind of seen in a while was more something of like, if there's only one other person, any conversation you have with that person, you're gonna like want to make sure that you're like saying everything right and doing everything right, right, you know? Adding another person to that dynamic all of a sudden makes you be able to whisper or have secrets or hold things back from one of, you know, right. that, that inside of, three people, there's also, you know, essentially the, the smallest uh, increment of, like, society that you could have or something like that. You shot this in New Zealand, correct? We did, yeah. So your last film, Compliance, um, is very, most of it takes place in a fast food restaurant and in one room within the fast food restaurant. <laughs> so it's like a very um, condensed space. But this movie, you get all these, like, gorgeous shots and, like, wide vistas and, like, you get to move the camera more. Like, what was your, what was it like for you to go from like very, very small confined space to like all of this vast? To be honest, it was like a big draw of the movie. I, you know, I spent a lot of time like trying to make like cardboard boxes in the back of a storeroom look cool yeah. <laughs> for the last movie, and was excited to like get to go outside <laughs> and show people that I knew how to <laughs> take pictures outside. To yeah. be honest, there's something about the the compliance, the other film, uh, is that it, it, like you said, it's like very kind of it's one location and one space and in some ways this is still has like a bit of that parameter they're in a valley there's three people 
you, you know, that, that, that was fascinating to me to like continue to play around in, but this just was like a little, you know, bigger. And getting to be outside was like a big draw. Yeah. <laughs>